Uh, Southern Coast Guard, Southern Coast Guard, this is uh, San Ramon B Station. Go ahead, over. I have a report of a male on Culver Cliff in distress waving for help. Can you immediately get into Culver? Yep, received, sir. That we're uh, deploying the clearing now. Over. My name's Mark Birch, I'm the Operations Manager for San Anne Shanklin Independent Lifeboat. I've been doing it for 20 years. The, the lifeboat station here has been in its current position now for the last 40, 45 years and it operates 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. All the crew will volunteer. They, not only do they volunteer as going out as crew, but they're volunteering, you know, raising money for the station. We've got quite a few different trades that are, are here now and uh, they all put their little bit in and help. Our standard area of coverage is from Bembridge Ledge around to St Catherine's Point and we roughly cover 70 square nautical miles. The history of the San Anshan Independent Lifeboat is in about 1886 there was a serious accident in, um, in the bay and there was an outcry so uh, money was raised by the school children for a boat and it was stationed at Shankland called the Dove. So there's been an independent boat in the bay since then. The standard crew for the vessel is um, you have the coxswain driving and then you have two, two which are sat straight behind him. The boat we've got is an Atlantic 21 built over in Cowes. It's purely designed as a search and rescue vessel. It's fully south rightening. It's called the Dove 2, named after the Dove that was in Shanklin, the first lifeboat in the bay. We're operated by the Coast Guard, they'll receive a 999 call or a Mayday message coming over the radio. They'll see that it's in our area, they'll know that we're available, they page us straight away. So or if the Coast Guard know that we're on station, they will just phone us direct or put a message over the radio to, for an immediate launch. The average launch time is somewhere around about seven minutes. People will be getting the boat out, tractor unit out, everything up and running. Some of the others will be getting changed straight away. So you've got one part of the team getting everything ready, one part of the team getting, getting all the kit on and meeting in the middle and going straight out to sea. Living on an island, it does make a difference to our role. You know, we've got every single thing in our area, from sandy beaches to shingle beaches to sheer cliff areas. We've got everything. People, they bring a little motorboat with them. They're out on the, the inflatables. We have children going mi missing. Every sort of disaster, people come down here diving. You've got huge, um, the water sports from the sailing to windsurfing, from kayaking. There's areas to get cut off. As a mixture of the type of works we do, it's, it's never ending. Every single object that people want to get involved in, I guarantee you at some point we'll be picking one of them up. The day-to-day -day training, you know, on a Wednesday night we're down here from seven o'clock onwards and um, we'll brush up on different aspects of the work we do on the boat, like the knot tying. Right, the idea of this is so you improve your speed on tying up so when we're on a job you can do it pretty fast. All right, so I'll do a time thing and then we'll see how you get on. So on your count, Phil. Three, two, one, go. I've met some of the best friends in my life through this place and um, it's quite nice now to sort of pass your knowledge on you know, nothing's better than a bit of experience. It, it does good. You get to see some funny things. And also, the other things we get into is speed trialling stuff. So, you know, we'll have competitions that who can get into their, um, their, all their, their safety gear, you know, the life jacket, the, the dry suit and the crash helmet, you know, have record times. And 
you know that generates you know generates speed so when you do get a call out you know everyone's up to full speed and to get launched as quickly as we can and get out there We do get a lot of people cut off by the tide, they want to walk around some of the, the rockier points and the tide comes in and the waves are breaking so they try and huddle in onto a rocky area and then you know hopefully they're going to get spotted. We'll head off in that general direction, scout the coastline, pick them out. We're quite well rehearsed now at going in and actually putting the nose of the boat onto a cliff and actually grabbing the person and pulling them on the boat. We then get out into a safe zone and... Um, check them over, put a life jacket on them and get them back to the station as quickly as we can, get them in the dry. When we come back to the shore, you know, the, boat's, the boat will be dirty, it'll need refuelling if we've used any supplies on the boat, whether it be medical or, or oxygen, um, everything will get changed. It gets fully washed down. At the moment we've got a little bit of a waiting list on people wanting to join, which is you know, it's quite healthy. If somebody wants to be a crew member, they come and find us. We have a short chat with them. I'll sit them down, go through, you know, how we operate. Having to know a lot about the sea doesn't necessarily mean that you'll get in. It's getting on with the team. Without that team effort, it just won't work. The lifeboat is funded by what we raise locally. Our operating costs are somewhere between 17 and a half, 18,000 a year. With that, some of the kit is being replaced and ongoing training with the crew, the, all the, the kit they wear from the life jackets to the, the dry suits to the undersuits to the crash helmet. There's quite a few businesses that will arrange charity events. We've got a lovely fundraising team now that are out there um, tackling some of these events. We average somewhere between 38 to 40 call outs a year with very good value for money for what we can produce. I do get a lot of pleasure out of being part of the Sand Down Lifeboat team. The role is dominantly to go out and save lives at sea and prevent accidents. I've seen some very sad things, I've also seen a lot more happier things and I've met a great bunch of people. I've done just over 20 years now and uh, I'm not quite ready yet to go and hang my life jacket up. You know, you don't get paid for the job, but uh, it's nice to give something back and I thoroughly enjoy it.